Why is the empty set a subset of every set, including itself? Well, before we answer that question, let's look at some simpler examples. What if we have A is a set containing the elements 1 and 2, and B is the set containing the elements 1, 2, and 3? Is A a subset of B? Well, to answer that question, we need to answer this second question. Is every element of A in B? Well, 1 is an element in A, and 1 is also an element in B. We see that 2 is an element in A, and 2 is also an element in B. Every element in A is also an element of B, and so therefore we conclude that yes, A is a subset of B. Now let's use the same sets but ask ourselves a different question. Is B a subset of A? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to ask ourselves, is every element of B in A? So let's use the same process again. B contains the number 1, and A also contains 1. B contains the number 2, a also contains 2. However, when we get to 3, we see that 3 is contained in B, but 3 is not contained in A. So the answer to our question is no. Not every element of B is in A. Therefore, we conclude that B is not a subset of A. Well, let's try to use this line of reasoning with our third example. Is the empty set a subset of B? In other words, is every element of the empty set in B? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. The empty set doesn't contain any elements, so this question doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, let's go back to our first two examples and see, could we have asked a different question? For the first one, instead of asking, is every element of A in B, what if we had asked, can we find an element of A that is not in B? Can we find an element of A that is not in B? Well, the answer to that question would be no. Or what about this last question? Are we left with the empty set if we take away every element of B from B? A. In other words, B contains 1, so if we take away 1 and we take away 2 and we take away 3, are we left with the empty set? Well, the answer to that question is yes. So we see that if one set is a subset of the second set, then the answers to these last two questions are going to be no and yes. What about our second example? Can we find an element of B that is not in A? Well, yes, we can find the number 3. 3 is in B, but it's not in A. What about the last question? Are we left with the empty set if we take away every element of A from B? A contains 1. Let's take it away. A contains 2. Let's take it away from B. We've taken away every element of A from B. Are we left with the empty set? Well, no. We're left with the set that contains the number 3. So notice that if B is not a subset of A, if the first set is not a subset of the second set, then the answers to these last two questions are going to be yes and no. So let's come back to our third example. Is the empty set a subset of B? Well, what are the answers to these last two questions? Can we find an element of the empty set that's not in B? Well, no, the empty set doesn't 
contain any element, so we can't find an element of the empty set. So the answer to this first question is no. What about the last question? Are we left with the empty set if we take away every element of B from the empty set? If we take away 1, and we take away 2, and we take away 3 from the empty set, are we left with the empty set? Well, yes, there wasn't anything to take away in the first place. So the answer to our last question is yes. Well, we see that our answers in the third example match up with our answers in the first example, so our conclusion is that the first set must be a subset of the second one. So is the empty set a subset of B? Yes. The empty set is a subset of B. And using this same line of reasoning, we could conclude that empty set is going to be a subset of A, empty set will be a subset of itself, empty set will be a subset of every set, including itself.